Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? You guys good? I'm going to invite you guys to stand to your feet with us this morning as we get ready, and I'm going to invite the worship team up. So we just want to say thank you guys for joining us, all those that are here and online. Listen, guys, I hope you guys came expecting a word from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Listen, I don't know if you need a victory or if you know someone that needs a victory, but this morning they're going to be singing a song, and it's... We're going to see a victory. And I really want you guys to own that this morning because let me tell you, we're fighting not only for our for our own selves, but we're fighting for those around us. So as you as you join into this song, as you engage into this song, you're declaring that you have the victory no matter what you are going to go through or what you're going through in this season. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Lord, we thank you this morning, God. We thank you because in you, Lord, we have the victory, Father. So we come before your presence this morning, Holy Spirit, and we invite you into this place as our honored guest, that you would come in, Lord, like a flood this morning, Lord. Whatever we came in with, Lord, through those doors, Lord, or online, Father, that we would leave it behind, Father, because in you we will find our strength. In you, we will find our peace. In you, we will find our anointing, Father. It is you who we come to see this morning, Lord. It is you who we come to hear this morning, Lord. So I pray, Father, over this word, Lord, that it's going to be planted in our hearts, Father, that it would come, Lord, and, Lord, that it would bring fruit a hundredfold in this season, Lord. Everything that the enemy has stolen from us, Lord, everything that the locust has come to devour, Lord, that you would come, Lord, and everything that the enemy meant for evil, Lord, that you would turn it for good. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful name, amen and amen. Say it with confidence. 
battles. You don't have to fight your battles. Because you know why? He goes before us. He is fighting that battle. And we declare victory in the name of Jesus. Because you, what the devil means evil for me, he's going to turn it for good. How many of you said with me? You take what the enemy meant for evil. Say with confidence. You turn it for You take the Lord. You take what the enemy meant for You turn it for good. today, the same God forever. You go before me. You have my battles. I give them before you. I turn them into you. And I choose this time to be in your presence, Father. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. Just lift your voice and say, you are holy. Lift, Lift your praise. Lift your praise to the Father. You are wonderful. You are powerful. You are my provider, Father. You are awesome, Jesus. You are wonderful, Jesus. You are wonderful, Father. There's no other name. There is no other name besides you.
say it one more time. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name. together what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is yes lord In the name of jesus christ hallelujah what a beautiful name nothing compares to your name
experience every day the goodness of God. So all of us here can say, I love you, Lord. Because all my life you have been faithful. Because your mercy never fails. I love you, Lord. Mm. Yes, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. So 
God so good? <laughs> well, welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. We're so glad that you made it the choice to be here in the house of God. Amen. Let's just take a few more moments in the presence of God. Would you just grab your neighbor by the hand and let's just worship God together. Let's say, God, you are good, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that you are good all the time and all the time you are good, Father Lord. We thank you, God, that you've been through a with us, Lord, through every season, Father, through every part of our lives. And Lord, this morning, we just want to give you praise. We want to give you glory. We want to give you honor, Father, Lord, for who you are. Lord, we love you. We bless you today. and We worship you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, do what you have to do in our lives, Father God. And Lord, as we've worshiped in song, Father, and as we offered our praises and our worship to you, God, we pray that it would be, Lord, a sweet offering, Lord, into your ear, Father God. Lord, that it would be a sweet-smelling fragrance into the nostrils, into your nostrils, Father God, and that you would receive our praise, receive the worship, God. Lord, because you deserve all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Joey. Come on, can we give one more clap offering to the Lord? Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, would you get out of your seat? We haven't done this in a while. Get out of your seat and give somebody a high five or a handshake. Amen. Well, I'm going to have the ushers come to the front. We're going to go to our next part of our service. Amen. Well, there's uh, a couple of ways you can give today. I want to, I want to, actually, yeah, I'm really excited because we're entering, we're supposed to be entering into the warmer part of our year. <laughs> and so I'm excited because that means that we are getting ready for Kids Crusade. And so one of the ways that you can help out, if you want to, if you want to give towards that, towards our missions and our outreach, we're doing Kids Crusade. Last year, we had about 300 kids that we, uh, that we were able to bless and be able to put on a great little festival and carnival for them and just tell them about Jesus. That's what we're going to do in about a month. And so school's going to be out pretty soon. All the kids say, yay, no more, right? <laughs> and all the teachers, that's right. All the teachers, woo, finally. Um, but for those of you that go to summer school and all that stuff, that's, that's going to be huge. But um, I want to I wanna challenge you, for those of you that are watching too, if you want to give towards our church. Last year, we had about two or three people give from out of state. One was from Arizona. They gave $1,000 towards our Kids Crusade. Woo! Come on. 
And we had a budget of about $6,000. So it, it costs money if we're going to do something like this for the community. But I want you to know that there's a lot of people that are blessed. And you guys are seeing that behind. I kind of skipped. And we're supposed to pick up offering, but I thought this would be a good, a good transition. Um, so this is where your um, offerings and your tithing goes to, is we want to bless our city. Amen? God has called us to be the church of the city. Can somebody say amen? And so we want to bless Warden. And one of the ways that we do that is we put on Kids, kids Crusade. And so you are part of that. And so I want to, if you can't give towards that today, maybe um, talk with your spouse or talk to whoever you have to, your accountant, and say, hey, how much can we give towards this? This is a great way to give in the house of the Lord uh, and, and give towards our community. So, But there's two ways you can give. You can give with cash or card if you need a, a, a an envelope, just raise your hand, one of our ushers. All right, we got one that's raising her hand. <laughs> Give her an envelope, but uh, just put your cash. Make sure you're putting, you're marking the envelope so that we can give um, credit to whoever needs to get credit for their giving, because at the end of the year, you can use that towards a write-off. That's always good. Um, and then if you're giving online, too, you can give online. Go to wardenassembly.com, and then hit the give card. You can get all that figured out, you, downloading the Tidely app. So I want to thank you for those of you that have been giving. All right, come on. Thank you for your, for your generosity. Thank you for giving towards the cause of Christ, towards the mission, which is to love God, to love people, and to serve the world. That's our mission. That's what we want uh, to do. And so we want to make sure we're doing that. And um, that's, that's really, really good. So let's pray for the offering. If you've already had a chance to, to make out a check or something, then hopefully I've talked enough so you can do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We bless you, Lord. And Lord, we ask right now, Lord, that you, Father, Lord, would, would uh, just, just move in our hearts, Father God, as we are preparing, Lord, to do this, uh, this outreach, Lord, and serve our community. Lord, we want you to be glorified. We want you to be honored, Father, in all that we do. Father, I pray, though, that you would, Lord, give uh, us, Lord, the ability to make an income, Lord, that we would be faithful with our tithes and our offering, Lord, to give unto you what is, what is rightfully yours, Father God. And so, Lord, we do this as an act of worship. We do this, Father, Lord, trusting that you're going to take care of us and that you're going to provide for us. So, Lord, thank you for the opportunity that we have to give unto your name and to give into your house, Father Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. And everybody said amen. All right. So that was one of my, um, one of my announcements. Hi, Lexi. <laughs> Uh, this is Pastor Angelica's sister, Lexi, everybody. So she's here. She's ready to worship. She's ready to hear the word. And um, so I'm, I'm really excited for, for what God's going to do. But getting back to the announcements, I want to thank you for, for being here. Um, there's, there's three ways that you can connect to our church. The first one is filling out a connection card. You can do that digitally online, wardenassembly.com. Ward, go to wardenassembly.com for everything. That's kind of our central hub for everything, information, for announcements, for sign-ups, and everything like that. Uh, hopefully, we can get our Kids, kids Crusade registration up online, too, so that parents can, can fill out the registration form and things like that. But um, So that's the first way that you can connect. So if this is your first time here, please fill out a Connect card, because I want to get to know you, and I want to get a record of your visit, and, and we just want to stay connected one of the things, one of the hardest things for a pastor to do is to get a sim, everybody assimilated into what God is, wants to do here in this house. And so the connection card is the first step. So if you haven't filled out a connection card, do it today, okay? Um, you can go to wordassembly.com, do it right now when I'm talking. While I'm talking, okay? I won't get offended. And then the second thing is joining a foundations class. So if you're here and you've never been to a foundations class, it's our, our membership class. It's learning all about what God wants to do in your life, what God wants to do here. And you're part of a bigger picture. Of, it's, just, it's more than just about me. It's more than just about you. It's about what God wants to do in our region, what God wants to do in our city. And so you need to come and find out how to get, be a part of what God wants to do here. And so that's the foundation class. If you need to sign up, you can go to wardenassembly.com, fill out a foundation's uh, registration, or you can go to the back table for us that are old-fashioned, and we just need a sign-up sheet. We can go back there to the table and sign up, and then I'll take your registration. Then the third step is joining a life group. So during the summer, it gets a little crazier, right, because... All the kids are out of school, and everybody wants to go on vacation and all that stuff. And so sometimes we have our life groups during the summer, and sometimes we don't. But we are going to be really, really busy with our kids' crusades. So, all right. Uh, the, other, the last thing I wanted to announce, we have a lot of announcements today, okay? 
But I just want you to be informed. I want you to be in the know, okay? The first thing is, is that if you are interested in going to the men's conference, there's still time to go. You can sign up there um, at, at the church. It's going to be at East Ridge Church in Issaquah, Washington. We're going to be there overnight. It's going to be Friday and Saturday. And we're going to have a great time. So listen, guys, you guys are, are, are more than welcome to go. We've already uh, reserved some hotel rooms. We're going to stay the night over there. We're going to eat a lot. There's going to be food trucks, I think, over there. Uh, there's going to be axe throwing, all the manly stuff, golf tournament. Uh, you're going to, you know, bike riding, all that stuff is going to be there. So if you want to get away, and women, if you want to send your men to, to get away from you for a day or two, this is a great place for you to send your guys to, to go and learn about God and then be encouraged in their faith and just be around other godly men that are seeking God together. And so uh, that's a great, great way. It's a great investment. Listen, as a pastor, I want to encourage you, invest in your spiritual life. The same way you invest in everything else, learn how to invest in your spiritual life with the Lord because really your spiritual life is your life, should be your life. Okay, there should just be a a certain section of your life for spirituality. Your whole life should be spiritual. Amen. It is spiritual. And so you need to learn how to invest. And this is coming from your pastor here. If you're if you don't know, it's very, very important that you invest in your spirit walk and your spiritual life, because if not, then you're going to see your part. You're going to see yourself lacking in that area. And so is your wife. So is your family. And we need men to be really Um, in tune with what God is doing in their lives. Amen? And then the second thing is the next Sunday after church, we're going to have an interest meeting for Kids Crusade. So we're going to hold it downstairs in the fellowship hall. We'll probably get some some Subway sandwiches. And so whoever's interested in helping out with our Kids Crusade, please come to our meeting next Sunday, and we're going to announce it again. Next Sunday, right after church, we'll have a little huddle. Um, We're going to be talking about what we need to do to um, get prepared for Kids Crusade. We are having a group of missionary kids that are going to come and do a short-term missions uh, here in Warden. There's going to be about 20 of them. They're all going to be sleeping in our fellowship hall, <laughs> and there's, they're going to set up um, um, showers outside for kids, students to be here all week. So they're going to be here. They're going to be living here. They're going to be eating here, and their, their sole reason for coming is so that they can help us fulfill the mission of God, amen? And so we're going to have an army of students, and so... Parents and, and, and everybody that wants to be involved, adults, if you want to be involved, please come so you can learn more about that. And we can all be in the same, on the same page and align together to be uh, effective. Amen. And so I already had the, the bouncy house guy call me. He's like, hey, are you guys going to need bouncy He's like, yeah, we're going to need bouncy houses. So get them licensed, buddy. Get the L&I license, whatever you need to get done, get it done because we're going to need them again. So... <sighs> Woo, that was a long announcement, but kids, you are dismissed. So if you're, you're here, your age is uh, 5 to 10, and even younger, you can make your way downstairs. We have uh, teachers that are ready for you. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? Okay. Do we need to take a lap around the church to make sure that everybody's awake? If you need a coffee, go and get some coffee. Um, I'm not going to be too long today. I'm going to reintroduce Acts 29. Uh, Acts 29, for those of you that came last week and you were here for Mother's Day, thank you for coming. We gave away some door prizes and we had some good stuff. We had the kids give out roses to the moms. And so it's always fun, but we're going to move on. Acts 29. Acts 29. Everybody say Acts 29. That's right. Um, Brother Ray says there is no Acts 29. The reason why there's no Acts 29 is because you're Acts 29. You are Acts 29 because you, God still wants to do something in the church and he wants to do something in your life and he wants to use you. So God's not done writing his story with the church. This is the the time of the church. This is a time where God wants to use you and me to reach the world. Amen. And we have a certain amount of time. Nobody knows the time or the hour when Jesus is coming back. So we need to be ready and we need to be about doing God's work, amen, in the kingdom of God. And so I, we've titled this series Acts 29 because I want you to know that God's not done with you yet, amen. God's not done with the church. The church is, is supposed to be not just a static institution. What does that mean? 
That means that, that the church was never meant to be just a place where people come and come together, sing three songs, give a little bit of offering in the offering plate, hear a good sermon, and go home. The church was never meant to be like that. The church was meant to be an agent of change and bring the kingdom power of God into a region, into a city, into a nation. Can somebody say amen? All right, I'm getting a little Pentecostal now on you, okay? Because the, the church is supposed to be the power of God here on the earth. You and I, wherever two or three people come together in the name of Jesus, we establish the power and the presence and the dominion of God. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Amen. Amen, amen Pastor Rick. That's right. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Acts. We're going to start in the book of Acts. <laughs> We're talking about Acts 29. But let me get back to my point as you're looking that up in your Bible app or your, your regular Bible, physical Bible. Acts chapter 1, we're going to start reading verse 1. But when Jesus called the church, it was the backdrop of the, of the gates of hell. So Jesus took the disciples to this place where there was animal sacrifice and there was human sacrifice. It was a very dark place where they worshipped gods of death, where they worshipped other gods that, that, were, that were not good. So Jesus took the disciples and he gathered them and he said, you know what? On this foundation, on this revelation that I am the Christ and I am, I am here to establish my kingdom, that on this foundation, I'm going to build my church. And when I build my church, you guys got to stay with me because I only have 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. And so what Jesus was saying, there's not too many places where we find the word church in scripture, and especially in the gospels. There's actually two times where Jesus used the word church. So when he used the church, the people had this, this, uh, this idea of what church was. Church was never meant to be a building. Church, church was never meant to be a temple or a synagogue. But we call church, church. This is great. This is a building. This is where the people of God who are the church, because you are the church and I am the church. And wherever we go, we have church. Come on. In my backyard, we have church. When I'm at the store, I have church. When I'm singing in the bathroom, singing my songs, right? When I'm getting ready, I'm having church, right? So I can have church everywhere I go. It's an ingenious idea that Jesus came up with because because he called the church the Ecclesia. And before I get into my sermon, I better just stop there. But Jesus took the disciples there and he said, you know what? I'm going to build my church and nothing's going to stop the church. You know, the only thing that stops the church is the church. <laughs> the only thing that stops the church is actually the church. I was in a meeting this week. I'm not going to tell you where. It wasn't in Warden, okay? But I was in a meeting this week. And they were, I had a brother arguing with me about the power of God and about prophecy when that's the picture of where the church is at right now. We're so busy fighting against each other that we are not getting the work of God done. If we could just come together in unity, if we could just realize that we're on a mission, right? And that God has given us a mission, then who cares if you disagree with me about prophecy? The main thing is the main thing that Jesus called us to make disciples. The way that you do it, the method that you use, use it. The method that you use, use it. But let's get together and let's build the kingdom of God together. Let's go and reach the lost. Let's go and do something amazing for the kingdom of God. But the problem is, is that we, we are, we're here, we're good at fighting each other, we're good at, at, at bringing each other down. I mean, you can go on the internet, and I'm probably on the internet of, as a false teacher and a false prophet because there's Christians out there that just don't like the way that, that I preach. They don't like the fact that I wear Jordans on a Sunday or I have a beard. No, you can't be a pastor, you can't represent God because you wear Jordans and you have ripped jeans and you have a beard. Well, I'm sure they said the same thing about Jesus when he was here on the earth. No, you can't, you can't be the son of God. Look at the way you look. Look at who you hang out with. You hang out with the poor and all the, the people that, that don't have, uh, you know, education. And, and, and so Jesus, you know, don't, okay. I'm, I'm just rambling on, but that's, what I'm trying to say is that we need to be on each other's side. 
We need to know that we're a team. We need to know that we're a body, that we've been called to be together because God has something great for his church. This is the hour of the church. This is the hour where God wants to bring the church into its glory so that we can be an agent of transformation, so that we can bring the power and the presence of God wherever we go. Come on, somebody say amen. So God uses dysfunctional people like you and me. He chooses the least. He chooses the poor. He chooses the ones that nobody else wants. He chooses a nobody, and he uses him to be a somebody in his kingdom. Can somebody say amen? So the church was never meant to be just a static institution. When I think of a static institution, I think of a lake. A lake after a while, it forms algae and it forms all kinds of gross bacteria. And then pretty soon, why? Because there's nothing that's moving. It's not fluid. It's not, it's not like a river. A river's always flowing. A river's always moving, right? There's always a current. God has never meant us to be static. In other words, to stay the same, to become stale. He didn't call us just to be a group of people that just rest and sit and wait. Oh, I'm waiting for Jesus to take me home. No, he's called us to move. He's called us to march. He's called us to expand. He's called us to reach. He's called us to do something. And it's never just to be sitting on our high knees. God has called us to move out. God has called us to work. God has called us to serve. And so when I'm talking about Acts 29, it's more than just the Holy Spirit power. Holy Spirit power is, is, is available for you and me. Holy Ghost power is like, man, it's like knowing going to the buffet and only eating a salad. When you just, when you go to the buffet, right, does anybody, has anybody gone to a buffet? Or is it just Pastor Rick? I like going to buffets. I get in trouble when I go to buffets because I want to eat everything. I have like five plates of everything, right? I have the seafood plate. I have the, the Mexican plate. I have the Italian. I have all these plates. And then I, if, I, if I'm good, I'll have like a little salad, you know. But I don't go to a buffet for a salad. I'm sorry. But some of us Christians, we access the power of God and the spirit of God like that. When we have all this, all this that God wants to give us, all we go is we get, we get saved and we're good enough and thank you God and we're, and we fight with our shame and our guilt because all we, all we're left, all we, we can think about is, oh, we're sinners and we're not good enough and God can't use me. When God says, hey, I have all this available. I've already paid for it all. The best thing about this is that God already paid for it. I love going out to eat and having somebody pay for me because the food always tastes better. I don't have to pay for it. It's the same thing with, with the gospel here. Jesus paid it all. And we're settling for just a little, little salad on the side of the plate. What I'm trying to say is that we have access to more. We have access to more, and God wants to use his church like never before. There's people dying of fentanyl. There's people, there's gang violence. I was at a meeting this, this week, and we were in a training that gang violence is starting to arise again in our region, in Othello, Moses Lake, Wenatchee, and we're seeing these gangs. You know what? The, the, thing, that's ha the thing that I, uh, I understand about gang life and about people that want to uh, join gangs is because they want to be accepted somewhere. Where the church, we should be the ones that are accepting them no matter where they're at, no matter what they look like, no matter what they smell like, no matter what family they come from, what background they're from. We should be having the LGBTQ. We should be having everybody come to the church, not so that we can say, hey, you're a dirt, dirty, rotten sinner. No, so that they can experience the love of God. Because if you don't understand the love of God, the love of God, you, you should never get tired of the love of God. Because if you don't experience the love of God, you don't know what it is until you experience the love of God. When you experience the love of God, you, I don't mean, I, I'm laughing, but you're never the same. When, when you experience God's love, you're so, you're so grateful that he would save you, that he would choose you, that he, that he says, you are mine, I chose you. Nobody can snatch you out of my hands, and I've taken you out of the darkness and brought you into the light. I've given you all kingdom authority. I've given you, to, to have, I've given you honor and glory to have dominion. Man, when you experience God's love, it changes you. 
But what I'm trying to say is that the church should be a church, should be a place, should be a place where people find community, where people find love. Where pe- You know what? Let the word of God change that person. It's not your job to judge somebody. No, my word says that we're not supposed to judge anybody. The scriptures say that we're not to judge anybody. So it's, there's no, you know, have you ever thought why there's not people that come into the house of God? Because the church has been good at judging. When should, we should be good at loving people because love, the Bible says that it's out of his kindness, out of the Lord's kindness that leads me to repentance. It's understanding who God is and how he loves me, even in my worst sinful condition. I'm not saying that there's not a hell. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And, and if you don't accept Jesus, and if you don't accept the love that he has for you, and, and understand the gospel, the Bible says that one day, hell was never created for man, but it was created for Satan and his puppets. And one day when Jesus comes back, he's going to throw the, the, the serpent and the, the, everything into the lake of fire. And those who do not accept Jesus will also be facing that judgment as well. But this is not a time of judgment. This is a time of grace. This is a time where God is giving you the opportunity to accept him. And one day when he comes back, the same way that he left, right, is the same way he's coming back. And he's going to come back and he's going to come back as a, a lion, the Bible says. And he's going he's gonna to come back with the army of heaven and he's going to take out the devil, the serpent. And he's going to judge the earth. But for those of you who don't know, my Bible says that we're going to be riding alongside King Jesus. I don't know how we're going, to, we're going to do that, but we're going to do that. Okay? And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. But let me get back to my point is that the church should be a church where the spirit of God is flowing, where the people are moving in the spirit, walking in the spirit, There should be a demonstration of the kingdom power of God. There should be things happening, right? Have you ever been to a church where it's the same old, same old for the last 30 years? That's not what we want. We don't want that here. We want God to be doing something, moving fresh every single service. Every single time we come together, we should be experiencing God. Let me read some scriptures. I don't know if... I don't know if I'm just speaking. I'm just sharing my heart this today because there's so many people that need Jesus. There's, you know, going back to the gangs, it's like they just want to belong to something. And, they're, and the, the cool thing, the great thing about it is they're looking for fathers and mothers. They don't know this, but they're looking for fathers and mothers that are going to mentor them, that are going to be there for them, that are going to speak into their lives, that are going to show them what it is to be a man or a woman. And you know what's happening? The school doesn't know what to do about it. The other systems, they don't know. And why? Because the church is miss- missing. Because there's other stakeholders, there's other people, there's those social agencies, and these people that are getting paid money from our government to try to fix the problem when the church is the, supposed to be the one, the agent of change in a, in a community. We've lost our influence. We've lost our, our, our importance in society. We've, the, the school is more important. Government's more important. Business more important than the church. When, at the beginning, what turned the world upside down was the people of God. And it wasn't the assemblies of God. It wasn't the four square denomination. It wasn't all. It was the church. It was the capital C church. And I'm telling you, if we learn how to get back to what God has designed the church to be, what is the church? I'm glad you asked. Let me, let me read some scriptures here. So we learned in Luke, right, that Jesus, after he was resurrected from the dead, that he showed he appeared himself to fi- over 515 people. And then he spent 40 days with the people teaching them about what did they what did Jesus teach them about? The kingdom of God. Wow. What is the kingdom of God? I'm glad you asked. The kingdom of God, the Bible says that the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is a a kingdom. It's an everlasting kingdom. It's an unshakable kingdom. It's It's an immutable. In other words, it cannot be moved, cannot be stopped. 
The kingdom of God is always expanding. And so what Jesus taught the disciples, he didn't just teach them uh, the Old Testament. But he did teach them the scriptures. He taught them, he taught them the scriptures. He talked, talked to them about the prophets. He talked to them about the Psalms and how he was the one to complete all. See, in the Old Testament, all prof, it all pointed towards Jesus as a Messiah and Jesus as king. Remember, the people of God wanted a king just like all the other nations. What the people of God didn't understand is that Jesus was a king. The Bible says that he, it was prophesied to David that one of his seed was going to be on the throne forever. And that seed, the son of David, who is, who is Jesus, all the Old Testaments, the prophets and the Psalms, they point towards Jesus. Now in the New Testament, we say, okay, now that Jesus is here, what did he, what did he preach? Jesus preached that the kingdom of God is at hand. So repent. So what he's saying now is that there's a new king in town, right? There's a new master in town, and this new king has come to reveal the heart of the Father. And we have come to establish the kingdom of, of heaven here on the earth. And so Jesus talked to him about how this kingdom is supposed to be expansive. It's supposed to have influence. It's supposed to be growing daily and daily and daily. And we should be catching fire. Amen. And so he taught about the kingdom of heaven. And so hopefully if you stick around, you're going to learn about the kingdom of heaven and why we are from a different kingdom, why we bring a transcendent kingdom. Yes, you are a citizen of the United States. You might be a citizen of Mexico or wherever you come from. But guess what? You are first a citizen of heaven. So because you have a citizenship of heaven, you actually have rights. And you actually have an inheritance that is not of this earth. Man, I should buy this DVD, this cassette tape. I'm going to buy this cassette tape. No, we don't, we don't have cassette tapes no more. Just go to Facebook and you can watch it or YouTube. But what I'm trying to say is that the church, we've gotten so far away from our mission. And we, you know what's lacking in the churches today when I say the churches, I mean the, the, the group, the people where people gather, the assemblies. There's no presence. There's no power. It's just all, we're like a social club. We're like a, a lion's club or a rotary club or we pay our dues and that's it. But God wants to do something powerful and he wants to do something supernatural. But it's going to take for us to really believe in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, Acts chapter 1, I'm going to read fast. I'm going to have to come back to this because I'm not going to have enough time. Unless you guys want to stay here another hour, we can do it. In my former book, Acts chapter 1, verse 1, in my former book, Theophilus, Theophilus means lover of God, lover of God. So yes, Theophilus, a lot of scholars believe that Luke was writing to this powerful, rich man and giving him a history or an account, a chronicle of Jesus' story, the Gospels. So the Gospels and Acts kind of, it's a bridge. The book of Acts is a bridge of what happened after the Gospel. Okay? And so Theophilus means lover of God. He says, so who's a lover of God here? All right, everybody, right? So in this book, he's writing to you. I wrote about all that Jesus had begun to do and to teach. Come on. He wrote about everything that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day that he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. And after his suffering, he presented himself to them and he gave them many convincing proofs that he was still alive. Remember I told you last week he asked for some honey, he asked for some fish, and he asked for some bread. He made like a, a honey basket or a shrimp basket from Popeye's. No, just kidding. <laughs> He went to Skipper's. He asked for Skipper's clam chowder and combo. He appeared to them, and, he, and after a period of 40 days, and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. Amen. So no longer was it about the law. No longer was it about the prophetic words that were spoken a long time ago. It was about the kingdom. The original purpose for man and the original purpose for women was because we were made to be representatives of God in this kingdom. Establish the kingdom of heaven here on the earth. Amen? But we forfeited that when we gave over the keys of authority over to Satan. But Jesus came back. Here's the gospel story. Jesus came back. He grabbed the keys uh, uh, of 
of the key, the keys of authority back from Satan. He unlocked the prison doors of the gates of hell. He set the captives free. He gave us uh, now a, a way to come into the kingdom of God as adopted children, sons and daughters. And now he's coming back one day. So this is, he's, he was talking about a kingdom and he wasn't talking about rules anymore. He wasn't talking about how we, there's no way that we can get back our original commission. Now he says, I, want, I'm, I had to pay with my own blood and I made a way so that you can be back to the Father and you can actually be kingdom representatives here on the earth. Ooh, come on, Jesus. So we, we actually belong to it, another kingdom. Can somebody say amen? amen. Ooh, so he said... Um, on one occasion while he was eating with them, so I don't know what he was eating. The other, the Gospels were pretty, give a little bit more detail. He was eating honey and fish and bread. That's what he was eating. Praise the Lord. And it says, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father. Woo so not only was he introducing the kingdom of heaven, but now he says, guess what? I have a gift for you. I'm about to go. I'm about to I need to jam out of here. I need, I need to get back to my rightful place, the right hand of the Father. But when I leave, I want you to wait for the gift of the Father because the Father has a gift for you. I'm glad that we're talking about the gift because we really can't do what we're called to do as a church without the gift of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. Not only do we have a great commandment, which is to love God and love people, we also have the great commission, which is to go and make disciples, but we also have the great empowerment, which is the gift of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to come upon you in such a way that you can't help but be a witness of who Jesus is. Let me say it this way. The Holy Spirit wants to fill you so much with his presence and his power that you can't help but be a witness of what you have seen. Or what you have, you have experienced. A lot of us can't witness about Jesus because we are not experiencing the power of God. But when we experience the power of God, when we experience the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden we have to tell other people about what God is doing in my life. And when God is doing something in my life, it, you can't help it but witness of his goodness and greatness and the kingdom of God. But if you are, not, you are not experiencing the presence of God, you are not being filled with the spirit of God, then it's going to be pretty hard for you to witness. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm about to wrap up <laughs> because I'm only scratching the surface of what I wanted to share with you today about but I just wanted to share my heart that Acts 29 is more about what God wants to do in the city of Warden and what he wants to do in his church and if you look to your neighbor look to your neighbor right now and say you're the church you're the church you're the church bro he's not done but we can't do it by ourselves we need to be full of the spirit of God so what did he tell the disciples? He says, I want you to go and wait for the promise of the Father. Because the Lord promised, he says, in the last days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send the spirit of Elijah. And not only that, but that's in Malachi. And the hearts of the fathers are going to turn towards the, towards the son. And the hearts of the sons are going to turn towards the father, lest I bring a destruction, destruction to the land or a curse to the land. So what does God want to do? He wants to bring restoration he wants to bring healing. He wants to turn the hearts of the fathers towards the sons. And he wants to turn the son towards the father because he's restoring family. He's restoring the family unit. He's restoring parents and children. The Bible also says that in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. And all flesh, all flesh will prophesy, not just the Sanhedrin or the Pharisees, or uh, the priests, or the people, the Levites that served in the house of God. No, everybody, man, woman, slave, free, Jew, yeah. Greek, yeah. white, Mexican. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> everybody gets to play in the kingdom of God. That's what I love about the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God makes us all equal. The blood of Jesus made a way so that you could be rich, the richest of the rich, you can be the poorest of the poor, and you can still be a child of God. You can still be a, a kingdom person. 
I don't know if you guys are paying attention to me or if you guys are understanding what I'm trying to say. But what I'm trying to say is that we couldn't do this on our own. So here we see in the book of Acts an introduction. Jesus came. He spent 40 days with the disciples. He talked to them about this kingdom. I'm sure the disciples didn't really get it. They're like, but I thought you were going to restore the kingdom of Israel. See, because Israel was a conquered nation and they were subdued by the Roman government. And they were living in those times where the Romans had authority over them. They, had, they were lording over the Israelites. And so the Messiah, a lot of people thought that the Messiah was going to come to liberate them from the Roman power so that they could have their kingdom and their nation over again. But Jesus came to introduce another power, another kingdom that was not earthly, and that that kingdom would be in the hearts of men. And so he says, I have this idea that I want to see the kingdom spread throughout the whole earth. And I'm going to choose my church to bring this kingdom message. But guess what? I'm not going to let you do it by yourself. I'm actually going to place my spirit inside of every single one of you. And I'm going to baptize you in the power of the Holy Spirit with fire. So that you can be my witness. So what does that mean? That we have a responsibility You and I have a responsibility. If you are going to be born again, saved, and really say that you're part of the church of Christ, then you and I have a responsibility to be a witness. And what is our witness? What is your witness? What does it mean to be a witness? It means to be able to have a record or someone who can go, like when you're you're in court, right, and you're a witness, you're able to tell the story because you were a witness you could testify of what had happened. But you can't, have, you can't have a testimony. You can't be a witness if you're not experiencing it, if you're not understanding it, if you're not in it. So a lot of us, we are, we are saved and we have the title of being Christians, but we really are witnessing. We don't have a Christian witness. We are witness, we're, we're not witnessing to those that, that don't know Jesus because we really aren't experiencing anything we are we're more like the world we're more like our co-workers when we should be saying oh i have to tell you about who i know that can change your life i have the joy i have peace i have i have the love so here we say here it says he said to them it's not for you to know the times or the dates of the father has set in his own authority but you will receive power. Can somebody say that? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And all the Pentecostals know throughout the whole world that verse, Acts 1-8. Yes, you will receive power. But the power is more for you. It's more than just for you to come and prophesy. And it's more for you. It's more than the power has been given to you more then you can just shake and jump up and down and be blessed and and do all the things here in church, in the church building, church setting. The power has been given to you so that you can be a witness. And a lot of people, we want the power of God because we want to do the spiritual gifts thing. We want to be famous. We want to be known in church. Yeah, well, I can prophesy, I can preach, I can teach, I can do all this other stuff. Well, the power of God has been given to, for that, but the power, it's more than, more than just for that. It's so that you can be a witness, be a Christian witness in this dark world. So you can bring the light of the gospel, light and the life of the gospel of Jesus Christ, wherever you go into the marketplace. Remember what I said last time, that the gospel is more than just the preaching of the word, but it's also a demonstration of God's power in you that you can, so you can serve other people. So it needs to be more than just words, but you need to back it up with actions. If you really believe in the gospel, it's more than just talking a good game, but you got to walk it out. You got to serve. You got to love. You got to be humble. You got to have the Thwaya ministry, like I said, the town ministry. Jesus said, if you want to be the greatest in my kingdom, you have to be the least of them all. You have to be a servant. I didn't come to serve, but I come... I mean, I didn't come to be served. I come to serve. 
The higher you go in the kingdom of God, the more that you're willing to give of yourself, empty yourself out for people. The more that the Bible says that if you give a glass of water to somebody who's thirsty, then you're doing it in Jesus' name. If you give to the hungry, if you go visit people in prison, if you go uh, take in somebody who's homeless or or an orphan, and somebody who doesn't have family, those types of things. See, this is what the church is known for, to love and to serve and not to be about me. It's not about me. I belong to something that's greater than me. It's not about my comfort. It's not about my preferences. It's not about what I like or what I don't like. It's not about what worship songs I like. It's not about what time the services are or if it's convenient for me. No, it's about God and it's about serving the Lord and it's about being willing to give of myself because of everything that he's done for me out of gratefulness as worship unto God, I give my life to God. I don't, it doesn't belong to me anymore. My life does not belong to me, but it belongs to God. So with that, I just want to say, I want to, win, I want to finish this up. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. What was Jerusalem to them? It was their backyard. So I want to tell you that the power of God comes upon you so that you can influence the people around you. Don't come to church and preach a good game if you're not doing it at home or if you're not doing it with your neighbors. Because your neighbors, your, your co-workers, the people that are around you should know that you're spirit-filled and that you carry the kingdom of heaven inside of you. Because when the people around you understand that, they're going to know that you are a son of God, that you are a daughter of God. The Bible says that after he said this, he was taken up in the sky before their eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. Listen to this. They were looking intently up into the sky. So I can just picture the disciples, Jesus saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you power. Wait for the promise of the Father. And you're going to be my witnesses here and all over the world. And he's like, when he's being taken up in the clouds. And the, and the disciples are just looking at him and they're like, you know, you're leaving. And the Bible says here, let's keep reading. It says, they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. And when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Warden Assembly, wake up. Warden Assembly, what are you doing looking intently into the sky? You got a job to do. A lot of us are waiting for Jesus to come back. And we're using that as an excuse not to be busy doing kingdom business, kingdom work. And Jesus is saying, hey, word and assembly, you're still alive. You're still there. So stop looking into the sky and start doing what I've called you to do. He's saying, hey, men of Galilee, wake up. Because the same way that he was taken is the same way he's going to come back. So when he comes back, he's going to expect us to do what he's called us to do. And that, what is that? To go and make disciples and to be his witnesses. Amen. Amen. Would you stand to your feet? I'm going to wrap up. Amen. Did I offend anybody today? Because sometimes the gospel is offensive. Sometimes God has to offend your mind so that you can accept what he has for you. The word of God doesn't make sense sometimes. But it's just because we're fighting it. And our mind, we don't want to accept it because we're so full of ourselves but God is saying I'm looking for an Acts 29 church I'm looking for my ecclesia you have been called out you are the ones that I want to use will you be receptive will you embrace the call that I have for you if warden is going to know Jesus it's going to be for people like you and people like you and people like you that catch fire of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses first here and then around the globe But he's looking for somebody who's going to be a vessel, somebody who's going to say, Lord, fill me. Lord, catch me on fire. I want to burn for you. I need the I need revival fire in my life. I need the Holy Spirit to come upon me like never before. Some of us have have been on fire before and some of us know what it is to be on fire. 
But God is saying, I want, a, I want a fresh fire. I want to touch you again. I want the Holy Spirit to touch your life. If that's you, then I want you to, to, to get ready. Okay? God is saying, who, who, who can I send? Who will go for us? It's the same thing, same, the same call that he had on Isaiah. Who can I send and who will go for us? Who can we send and who will go for us? God is looking for somebody. He's saying, Lord, I need, I need the fire. Amen. I'll go. You'll go. Who wants to go? Who wants to be filled? Who wants to say yes to Jesus? Amen. Amen. Father, you see the hands that are raised. God, would you fill us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, God? Would you fill us once again, Lord Jesus, with your fire, Lord, that we would be your witnesses here in Warden and in Othello and in Moses Lake and in Royal City, Lord, and all the surrounding areas, that the Columbia Basin would be a hot spot of revival, Father God, that you would use us, Lord, to bring your kingdom here on the earth, Father God. Let us bring heaven wherever we go, Father God. Let us correct the wrongs, Father Lord. Let us bring joy instead of sorrow. Let us bring peace instead of chaos, Lord. Let us bring, Father, healing instead of division, Father God. Let us bring answers instead of more problems, God. And Lord, we need you, Holy Spirit, to, to, to work inside of us, to fill us, Father, to overflowing. In Jesus' name, God. In Jesus' name. Can you imagine with me what it would look like if we would start a revival in our own homes? It starts with you. Would you ask God to revive you? God, revive me. Give me fire of the Holy Spirit so that I can do what you want me to do, Father God. Lord, take out the things that shouldn't be there, Father God. Burn away, Father, the things that shouldn't be there with the fire of your Holy Spirit. Lord, give me a boldness and a courage, Father, to step out in faith and do things I've never done before, Father Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. We bless you, Lord. Lord, would you bring revival to our homes, to our marriages, Father God, to our families, God. For those of you that don't have uh, your spouse with you, I just want you to know that God is moving. God can still move. He's still moving. Your prayers are effective. Your prayers never have an expiration date. So if you keep on praying, God says, keep on praying. Keep on praying for your loved ones. Keep on praying for your husband. Keep on praying for your wife. Keep on praying for your children because God is going to do something. There's going to be revival and, and families are going to come back to him. You say, God, use me at home. God, use me in my family. God, use me at church. God, use me at work. Wherever I go, God, I want to be a vessel for your honor and for your glory, God. Lord, we love you. We bless you today. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Anybody receive today? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to have Lupe come up, and he's going to dismiss us today. How many of us enjoyed that? Amen. It was good, right? Um, I like that. Uh, what I got out of it, that we need to be the church. Like it says, Acts 29, we've all been given the power, you know. So we need to spread the love and the joy. So let's witness to people. Who, let's listen to the Holy Spirit. And just, just be wise and love. Let's spread the love because that's why those people that join gangs join those gangs because all they want is to be loved. Who doesn't want to be loved, right? So let's spread the love and pray for one another. Pray for this city. So with that, I close. Father God, let us use what we heard today, Father God, and be witnesses to our families and our people at work that we work with, Father God, and the and the people that we come to, uh, that we see at, at the stores, Father God, let us witness your love, Father God. Be with us throughout the week, Father God. We love you, Father God. We give you all the honor and all the glory. Be with us each and every day, Father God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.